All right. Would be typical for us to go and beat Leeds now, wouldn't it? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're doing this now because I'm going out for some dinner later. The glare behind me is a huge problem, but we're going to have to live with it. Um, what I might do, actually, to close them, and then it should be a bit better. That's what we'll that's what we'll do. That's what we'll live with. Um, Rory and Amber's reaction at the end of the game the other day says it all, doesn't it? It's it was a tough one to take that because it was so just dreadful. When we've played Southampton and Leicester, the football we've played has been brilliant. Fast paced, high press, move the ball well, get the ball forward quickly. It's good football. But whenever, whenever else at home, it's just, it's boring. We have the odd little quick pass and move. Move, pass and move kind of move. And then it just... That's it. That's it. So, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Um... I saw Bentos make the point on Twitter today. Anyone notice how this season fell to pieces as soon as we let Lakila go out on loan? Fishing. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's awkward. I'm going to try and find that picture of Rory and Amber. Someone took it from the Upper West or in a box or something. Um, where is it? Come on. I've clicked present. Why is present not showing up? Thank you. I've clicked share. Why is it not sharing? <laughs> My computer's been so slow today. Um, come on. Right, now, oh, there we go. I was going to say, now it says Google's not responding, so that's good. Um, yeah. Reactions. Reactions from Rory and Amber. What can I say? Brilliant. And as the original tweet says, mood captured. Mood was very much captured. <coughs> yep. Brilliant. Rory and Amber, right? Goats. Absolute goats. Um, would sum us up if we win tomorrow after Friday. Exactly what I said when I started this off, Kieran. It would be so typical City for that to happen. And to be honest, like Will says, I can see us grabbing something. As deluded as it sounds, it's the most whole City thing to do ever. Have We did it against Stoke. Just before Ajahn took over, we had Stoke. We had a brilliant performance against Everton. Against Everton, the next home game was Stoke, and well, 
it was dreadful. The only shining light in that game was the fact that we saw Tom Huddleston's passing range a little bit. But we also saw that Tom Huddleston didn't have the legs anymore. It was dreadful. And then the very next home game, Blackburn rearranged from Boxing Day when everyone had COVID. We thought, right, the takeovers, the takeover got done that day. So there was a real feel-good atmosphere around the club. We go and beat Blackburn, who were third in the league, and Bournemouth, who were second in the league, on the bounce straight afterwards. It's unreal. Some of the some of the typical city stuff that we do. Um, but this is the point I was making against top teams. We play better football. And I don't know why we can't play. Obviously, teams lower down the league will set up a different way to play against us. But we just move the ball a lot slower at home. And it's, it's infuriating. It's really, really infuriating. But it's... If, the, if we play like we did against Leicester and like we did against Southampton every week, we batter 90% of teams in this league. But it's not as simple as that and we don't. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And put a good tweet out as well about scoring goals at home. There's no doubt. I, I, I'll i read you what I put in our To Hull and Back podcast group chat the other night. Because like, I'm not going to say what anyone else has said. That's not my place to that's not my place to do it. Because that was sent in a in a private private um forum. But I said, it's not rosy out territory like some are making out, but today was dire. Our home form will cost us a playoff spot, no doubt. I'd start Panda, Tufan, Irma and Connolly against Leeds. Out of the three fit strikers, Connolly is the most likely to be here next season. We've had so many games like today at home this year. In the last month or so, we've had three, where we battered one... T- we, uh, we've had so many... Games like today at home, like today at home this season. In the last month or so, we've had three. We've battered one team at home this season, and it's Rotherham, so it doesn't really count. Chef Wednesday went one 0 up in peak banter era under Zisco and got a sloppy consolation at the end. Norwich beat Stoke three 0 last game week. We need to do the same to teams like Stoke for the rest of this season and into next year, because otherwise we don't stand a chance of going up without finishing teams off. And then, where's Ant's tweet? He put a he put a really really good tweet out looking at some stats. Our home record is played twenty, won seven, drawn seven, lost six. Goals for twenty seven, goals against twenty two. Fourteen of those goals were scored in four games. So that will have been Chef Wednesday, Rotherham, Cardiff, that was three. So that's four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. When did, what's another game? When did we score three at home this season? Cardiff Rotherham, Chef Wednesday. What was the other game we scored three at home? What was it? I'm, I'm having a look at my look at my spreadsheet. So, uh, Chef Wednesday, Rotherham, Cardiff. 
and Blackburn. There we go, 3-2. But even in those games, Sheffield Wednesday went 1-0 up to a shit goal. And then they scored a sloppy consolation at the end. Rotherham could have been a hell of a lot more had Victor Johansson not been playing out of his skin. And they got a sloppy consolation. Cardiff, fair enough. You know what? We we did batter Rotherham, but I think we also battered Cardiff as well. So, fine. Um, I retract that bit of the point. And then Blackburn, we shouldn't have conceded those two either. We were comfortably 2-0 up. Um, right. But, yeah, so back to Ant's tweet. 14 of those goals were scored in four games, meaning the other 13 were scored across the remaining 16 games. Home form and inability to play with increased tempo and intensity has tossed us top six, in my opinion. Home form is undoubtedly, I said it, I said it in the vlog, what will cost us a playoff spot. You've got to be winning at least half of your home games. We've got three more home games left. And the max we can win is 10. We need to be winning minimum 12 home games. And someone's made the point below um, in reply to Ant's tweet that Rossini needs to learn how to penetrate low slash mid blocks. That's the reason we're struggling for home wins. Teams, mainly relegation fighting teams, will play those strategies away from home and Rossini has no clue how to counter it. To counter it, We do well away because, to his credit, Rossini knows how to, <clears throat> how to out-football a manager. But when it comes to teams hitting on the counter, he's inept. He needs to learn how to create spacing behind when fighting a low block just without getting all sorts of twat balls upfield. Fine. And then someone replied to that tweet, if you sit deep, you're guaranteed a point against us. What really worries me is teams sit deep and then beat us by two goals as well. Because at home, we're playing in slow motion. We do play in slow motion at home. Why can't we play like it? The thing is, we can play like it switch. We've done. We have played like it switch this season when we move the ball super, super quickly against Rotherham at home. Leicester at home, we did the same. Leicester away, we did the same when we had to. That goal, the goal we scored at Leicester, brilliant. Seri, perfect pass to Delap, great run, great movement, bang, in, goal. Didn't need to do anything else, defended really well, got three points. Leicester at home, that game was brilliant. We were the better team in that game. And we moved the ball Super quickly. We've got the players to play that way. But at home, we just... We play in slow motion. It's so predictable every time we're in the final third. Yeah, because we play... At home, we play so slowly that... Teams can just get everyone back, sit on the edge of the area, and we can't break them down. And we're scared to shoot from outside the box. What also frustrates me as well is Philogene sometimes. First of all, Rosinha put him back on the left, drops a Rory. Second of all, he had an opportunity. We had an opportunity. Jaden Philogene on the left, just after Abdush has been brought on. Receives the ball, brings it down, has a look, sees Fabio Cavallio unmarked on the edge of the penalty area, just inside. He can easily play that ball with his left foot and Cavallio can have a shot at goal. 
Not saying it goes in by any means, because there were there were a lot of stoke bodies already in that box. And a lot of our bodies as well. So it could it could well have deflected off one of those. But Philogene just stopped, tried to beat his man and go further up the line and then whip the crossing from the byline going backward. Jaden, when you've got the opportunity to make the easy ball in a situation like that, you have to make the easy ball. Sam H. Friday was dreadful. It was absolutely diabolical. But we've won... We've won more games away from home than we have at home this season. Our, away from home against top T against relegated teams, we've got a really good record. Really, really good record. Beat Leicester, beat Southampton. It's only Leeds left. Equally, Leeds are dominant at home, haven't lost at home all season. So this is arguably our toughest test of the three. And the thing is, Sam, it's so typical Hull City, as I discussed earlier in the stream, to put a performance in like that against a team lower down the table and then go and beat the team at the top of the league. It's so, so typical. I'll say nothing more on that. I do agree with this, though. People calling for Rossini to be sacked need to give their head a wobble. Exactly. It's not Rossini out territory at all. Look where we are in the table. For so many weeks... Well, we've now dropped to the lowest in the table since the Norwich home game. It's only ninth. If you take away the opening day against Norwich when we when we lost, every single other game this season, after we've played it, we finished it in the top half. Did we even touch the top half? Last year, apart from like, well, apart from the early wins under Schotter, when we beat Bristol City, got a draw against Preston, beat Norwich, drew to Burnley, um, Oscar's hat trick against Coventry. If you ignore that first, what is it? One, two, three, four, five games. One, two, Three, four. If you ignore that first six games, the descent, we go from when we lose to QPR, we go from third down to 11th. Lose to Sheffield United, we go from 11th down to 12th. Then after Stoke, we're 17th. After that, we were, when we dropped to 17th in the table, we then went lower, lower, lower. Rossini picked us up 21st in the league. Under him, we were 11th after the... We were 12th after we beat Cardiff at home. And we were 11th after we drew to Stoke away. Apart from that, if you ignore the early weeks of the season, apart from those two games there, those two weeks, we did not see the top half of the table last season. This season... From game week two onwards, we have been consistently in the top half. We dropped as low as 12th. We were as low as 12th after we beat Sheffield Wednesday game week two and lost to Southampton at home in October. Other than that, the lowest we've been in this league is ninth. That's still incredible progression. And the thing is, right, we've, when people say about results that Adjun's chopped and changed manager so much, we, we, 
we stop and we say, no, he hasn't. He got rid of Grant, finally wanted his own man. When he realised his own man didn't work, he got in Rossinha, who steadied the ship perfectly. And when people say, oh, he's changed managers a lot, hasn't he? He hasn't really. So fans who say that are now also calling for Rossinha's head. Which, to me, also doesn't make any sense at all. Look. He merits another season, at least. And I don't see... I, I don't understand anyone. I, don't, I, I just don't agree with anyone who says otherwise. Simple as. Um... Yes, like I said, though, it would be the most typical Hull City thing to do. If we don't beat Leeds, it's over, but I think we will. Typical City. If we lose tomorrow and Norwich win, it's over. Also, Norwich should have two less points and we should have an extra point due to their goal. They shouldn't have stood at the start of the season. Thought I'd point that out. Yeah, we haven't had much refereeing luck, have we? Let's be honest. Um... Poor disaster against Stoke on Good Friday. They were not in it at all, and it was the players' fault. It's not a gun pointing to Racine yet. He's had a great. Yes, he ha... yes we have had a great season, and yes, the players do have to take some of the flak. But ultimately, he sets them out. He tells them to play a certain way for every game. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't seem like it's possession with no purpose, which. At home, it has seemed that way this season. Frustrating thing for me is we've tried to accommodate the new players and gone backwards. Exactly what I said on Twitter. Let me let me get my tweet up. So looking ahead to Leeds, I'd start Panda, Tufan, Abdush, and Connolly. Drop all Sop Carvalho, Zaruri, and Ohio. Out of the three fit strikers, Connolly is the most likely to be here next season. Also worth noting that Tufan and Connolly have scored as many as Jaden. Panda is surely our long-term number one. Rosie here have also his debut versus Leeds, and he had a good game. Apart from Allsop, the three I'd drop won't be here next year. In the position we're in after yesterday, we should start looking ahead to next season a little bit. I say a little bit there because it's obviously still mathematically possible. Just incredibly difficult. What I will say there, though, I read this morning. Let me find Baz Cooper's tweet. Because I think it's time we talk a bit about Noah Ohio. Now, we've seen a little bit of him. If I share... Reach Hull Daily Mail. Liam Rossini says, uh, says signing Noah Ohio on a permanent basis is very much a consideration going into what will be another summer of big change. 95 minutes of championship football. Uh, Rossini has been keen to point out that the club and the player himself are doing a huge amount of work. Um, 100% Rossini told Hull Live when asked if the club would consider making a permanent move. We've got to see how we develop him. We give him so much information in terms of the way that we play, where players need to stand on the throw-in, what different angles of press that they need to, to that they need to make in the game. There are so many things like that that I can't speak about because fans will get bored of, but actually... What makes the, the what makes the difference to the game, and Noah needs to work on that. It's clear to me and the staff that he can get better and improve, and that's what we're analysing him for as well. Can he do that in the time that he's here? Because whether Premier League or Championship, he's got outstanding athleticism, outstanding pace. He can finish, but needs to add other things to his game, which is natural at his age. I thought it was a positive debut. I thought for a young striker, his physical, quick, held the ball really well, really well at times. Gave us a different way. We could be a little bit more progressive from our build and be a little bit more high tempo. But the other thing, that's his first start. And people say, why don't you start him earlier? You can see on 65 minutes, he was absolutely blowing up. 
you know that's not his fault. He's trying to build his fitness. So for me, it was a positive debut in terms of full debut from him. He doesn't need to overthink it. We'll make the right decisions moving forward. Yada, yada, yada. First of all, he's been with us three months, two, three months now. Why on earth is he still getting his fitness up? Why? Why? How can he not have his fitness up? Will says the players were reluctant to pass to Noah the other day. Rosinha acknowledged the high tempo in build-up. Ohio, yeah, he did. It, it did some good, um, a good bit of build-up once or twice. But he's got the first touch of an absolute shire horse. And that's why there were the comparisons to Josie Altador. Because of that. Because his first touch was appalling. He has scored one goal in 95 minutes, yes. And he's got a better record than Billy Sharp, but equally... Aaron Connolly has scored as many goals as Jaden Philogene has this season. And this is where I disagree. He's not horrendous. He's our joint top scorer this season. Surely to win a game of football, you want to have the players who have scored goals for you that season, earlier in the season, proven they can do it on the pitch all together at the same time. In that case, why, since he's come back from injury after his concussion against Norwich, has Aaron Connolly not had a sniff? Why, since January, has Ozan Tufan started one game, two games? Why? Why? And you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll shake things around a little bit, actually. Um, Ohio has made much more of an impact than Sharp. Exactly. And we've seen a lot more of Billy Sharp. Um, I think the Connolly hate is ridiculous, but Rossini clearly doesn't believe in him. That's an interesting one. That's a really interesting one. Um, Connolly isn't professional. He's clearly been out on the drink since Gunn took him out. Um, Rossini, if Rossini gets asked about Connolly not playing, he'll just say he needs to get his match sharpness back. Well, that's what his under-21s appearance was for. I wonder whether Rose even wants to play with the striker next season. Maybe he'll persist with the false nine. Interesting. Um, if we beat Leeds tomorrow, I'm more confident playing away than at home lately. True. Right. We're going to change things around because this is back. Okay. Let's make that full. Okay. So, I want Panda in goal. Popper Dom wrists, all sop. Get gone. He's our long term number one. Recently, we've seen what Cardiff fans mean about him being all slop and having wrists like a plastic bag, wrists made of glass. So, Throw a panda in at the deep end. He did the same with Allsop. 
against Leeds and he excelled. Why not do the same with Ivor Panda? Right back, Coyle, centre backs, Jones, McLaughlin, left back, Giles. Midfield, Tufan, Morton, Seri, Amur on the right, Philogene on the left, and Aaron Connolly, for God's sake, up front. The bench, Allsop, Doherty, Ohio, Traore, Slater, Matty Jacob, Stan Ashby, Fabio Carvalho, and Anas Zaruri. We, are, we had, on paper, the best January window of any championship club in history, maybe. Yes, it takes players' time to bed in, but we've spent one and a half million on a goalkeeper who we haven't seen yet. Carvalho, goals to game has been better than Twine, but equally, Twine was hardly ever played centrally. Um, Giles has been a phenomenal signing. I just hope that we have the funds to buy him. Abdush has probably been the pick of the bunch. And Zaruri. I'm undecided. I'm undecided about that. I'm not Racine, you're out. Don't worry. Would you sell Philogene if we could buy Giles and Delap on permanence using the cash? The way Philogene's playing at the moment, if we can get 30 million for Jade and Philogene, that secures Ryan Giles, that buy option's about four, four and a half million. That's the ballpark figure. Yes, absolutely. And Liam Delap, if he comes back from injury in the next few weeks' time and hits the ground running, then, oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely yes, please. Um, I'd say Delap 10 million, Tom Cannon, Ross Stewart, etc. region. I think Man City will want a bit more than 10 million. And the thing is, we can't afford, we need to do so much as well. If I open up our squad list on here, If I open this up, right, we're going to need Giles permanently. We're going to need at least two strikers, someone to replace Morton, probably someone to replace Philogene. It'd break my heart, but maybe someone to replace Greaves. These two are going to go, obviously. Out on loan down here as well, we haven't really got... Anybody who can come straight in and make a difference. Sorry, Javo. Um, I think Doc will go at the end when his, uh, when his contract expires. I think Traore will go when his contract expires. I think Cynic will get sold. I think Sharp will go. I think Longman will go. I think Estupinian will go. Fleming will go. Lakilo will go. Um... Kerville will go, Christie I think will go, so we're going to need another right back, a left back, hopefully that's Giles and Fairlong can be number two. You know what I think it would be worth doing, if that, if, I'm not sure if the National League window is still open or not for loans, but getting, just getting Fairlong out to no matter what level it is, playing football, because it can't be doing him any, he can, it, I don't care whether it's Ferriby, to be honest with you. Train with City like you would every week. Go and play for Ferriby and just get him playing football. Um, Sims is gone, hasn't he? Um, 
I hope we keep Ollie Green. I really hope we keep Ollie Green. Because if we keep Ollie Green and Rocco Coyle, I don't necessarily think we need to bring in a Doherty replacement. So I think Ollie and Rocco, they're, they're the ones for the future, really. Um, Connolly's contract's up as well, of course. We've got Matty Jacob as well for left-backs, haven't we? So maybe loan fair long out next season like we'd hope to do in Jan. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think if we keep if we keep Ollie, whose contract's up, and Rocco's here, he's got another two years at least on his contract. I don't necessarily think we need a replacement for Doc if he goes. We still need someone to come in and replace Morton or hopefully get Morton back. But... Yeah, that's that's how it looks. Um, yes, Sims has been released. Um, why Coville? I just think I just think his time's up. To be honest, um, Mills and Ashby look class as future centre backs. Um, I I think. How old's Jevon now? Because Jevon's going to be out on loan at Bohemians until November, which puts him firmly back down the pecking order. Same with Alfie Taylor. They've both been leapfrogged by Stan Ashby now. Jevon's 20. He's going to be 21 in September. I like Jevon. I really, really like Jevon. I think he's a brilliant player. And he, he's been solid for the 21s whenever I've watched him. But I, I think... If you're Jevon Mills now, I think you've got to be looking for a permanent move away to League Two, League One level. If I think a logical move for Jevon, exactly, he's impressed in he's impressed in Ireland. A logical move for Jevon is Doncaster. Grant really, really rates him. Really, really rated him at City. Um. What else was I going to say? Grant really rated him at City. Donny is struggling. So Grant's going to... He must... Jeff, for me, that's a logical move for both Grant to make and for Jevon to make. Um, Tom Nixon coming back. I don't think Nixon will make it either, to be honest with you. How old's Tom now? I think he's 21 now, Tom Nixon. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, he's 22 now. Stranger things have happened because Matty's... Because Matty's 22. He's 23 this year. But... How rare do players of Matty's age break through that late. Ollie Green, he's 20, so he's worth keeping for me. And I think in terms of from an under 21s perspective, you look at uh, his, that's another one. I think Callum, I think I think that loan out to Forest Green has killed Callum Jones's chances here as well that were already slim. Um I think you look if you look at the 21s this season, they won their first game at Ferriby all season last Tuesday. And in uh, that team, when Ollie and Rocco are in that team together, they look such a more well structured unit. I think when you Put Stan Ashby back in that mix as well. And that, and the spine of that team, hopefully we see this on Tuesday, is Ashby, Coyle, Green, and then you've got Bora and Sellers Fleming in there, hopefully. The spine of that team, may, when that's the spine, it's, a, it's so much stronger a team. 
And Ollie, Ollie's a great, great kid. I get on super, super well with him. I think he's totally worth keeping around. He's training with the first team consistently. And I don't see why. I, I think it's worth, like I say, it's worth keeping him around. Um, also, Xavi as well. Xavi to come back. That's That's a great shout. He was he was really highly rated by the senior at the start of the season. Um, apparently, Bore is terrible. No, you could tell when he first arrived he struggled initially adapting, but now he's in there. Now he now he's acclimatized to this environment. He's really really started kicking on. I think he scored in all in like last seven games. He's got at least one goal. So. I'm going to speak to Bora on Tuesday, try and find out what's happening with him at the end of this season. Because I think he's he's definitely worth keeping around and giving, and giving a go. Especially if we lose Jaden Philogene next season. If, if Bora in pre-season rocks up and does exactly what and Vaughan Kerville did when he came in, if he's kept around, then if we're moving Philogene on, moving Longman on, moving Lakilo on, well, chances are we move Philogene on anyway, but if we're going to move on Lakilo, Longman, we're lo Cynic, we're losing depth there because already we haven't got Zaruri. We've got what? If, if Cynic... I'm losing the list. If we lose Cynic, Lakilo, and Longman, if we lose Cynic, Lakilo, and Longman, then the wingers we've got left with Zaruri going as well are Abdush, Philogene, who also likely would be sold in the summer, so we'll knock him down, are Abdush and Harry Vaughan. AGU, you've mentioned um, you mentioned Jav, you mentioned Jarvo in there. He's out on loan until November again at Shelburne. So that leaves us with it leaves us with Vaughan and Abdush. Chuck Bora in there, man. If we're losing Philogene, you've got to bring someone in to replace him, obviously. But then your two backup wingers, as Harry Vaughan and Bora Eidenleck. Bora, who's really, really kicked on recently. It's worth keeping the lad around. It's worth keeping the lad around. 100% is. Um... Vaughan is, Vaughan is not poor. Harry Vaughan is not poor. Give your head a wobble. Just hasn't had the same opportunities this year. Um, Chris Willock on a free. I think we will go back in for him, definitely. Um, anyway, I've been waffling for 45 minutes now. And we've not done anything apart from link the wanted 11 into that. So, um... Where's the other thing I wanted to open there? If I get rid of the one in 11 now. Um, all the Bristol Rovers fans say Vaughan is shit. He hasn't really had opportunities there, though. He got he started one game. They lost it 3-0 and he's not started since. And there's only so much you can show off the bench as... Noah Ohio has found out. You're right, it won't be as easy to sell all the deadwood, but it's funds we need to raise, so it's in our best interest to try and move them on. I watched it, he looked so out of his depth there. That was also his debut. New play, new team, new place, Hasn't been there long.
The lad hasn't had good opportunities there. It's an experience to it's an experience in terms of playing football for him. It, it, games that he wouldn't have got here. So 100 percent was worth sending him out on loan anyway. Um but yeah, good kid, really good kid. He's got a big future here. And um, apparently they play Vale at left back too. And I was told that Vale walks into our team at left back. Yeah, well, maybe don't believe all the Bristol Rovers fans then. If Harvey Vale walks into our team at left back, then something's clearly up. Anyway, rattle through this. Team news, Greaves and Delap are the only two absentees. Referee, this is all going to have died. So I've not touched it in forever. So I need to wait the tabs up again. Come on. My computer's just been slow today. It's just been really, really slow. Come on now. Monday, there we go. I've sorted it. They've woken up, I think. Referee is Josh Smith, two Linos and Matt Jones and Sam Lewis. Fourth official is Andy Kitchen. Stats from the Stoke game, the only thing we really need to be asked about is the fact we didn't have a shot on target. All that possession and for what? Didn't have a shot on target. Cool. Done. Um, now, if you look at... Oh, for God's sake, it's frozen. Again, why is it so frigging slow? If we look at Leeds's team, bollocks, Rutter's back. That must be the quickest recovery from a hernia operation ever. Um, do, do you reckon you could put a poll out on Twitter asking if people think playoffs are over? It'd get loads of votes if you put it out as well. It'd be interesting to see what people think. I think at the moment it's done. Because being a realist, I don't see us beating Leeds. However, knowing what Hull City are like, I see us beating Leeds. And then it's back on again. So, it's a strange one. So... Leeds in the last game. It was Melier in goal, back four. Archie Gray at right back. I can fully see him moving back into midfield at some point, but he's had a phenomenal breakthrough campaign. Joe Roden, um, Liam Cooper, Boo, and Sam Byram were the back four. Midfield where Ethan Ampadu. And Glenn Cam uh, uh, and Glenn Kamara. Then the wide players, Dan James, Crescencio Somerville, with Patrick Bamford, the striker, Jorginho Rutter in behind. Their bench was Carl Darlow, Junior Fairpo, Charlie Cresswell, Joel Perot, Jen Anthony, Jamie Shackleton, Joe Gellhart, Matteo Joseph, and Charles Crew. So no. Nonto. Um, but that's the only real injury. Because Rutter's come back. Um, no one thought we'd beat Sunderland away with all our injuries, but we did have faith, exactly. Wait, I mean, I highly doubt, but this uh, technically tomorrow is April and Delap's supposed to be back early April. No, absolutely no chance. Um, he's going to come back to Man City this week coming or next week. So, 
as a, a guess, I'd say we'd have him back for QPR. QPR or Middlesbrough, that's my guess. Um, or early to mid-April. Uh, I, like I said, I think it'll be Middlesbrough or QPR. Um, Rutter won't start. Started the other day. None to out two, three weeks for Leeds. Gruev might be available tomorrow. Rutter starting on Saturday, though. It's not on Saturday, on Friday. I don't see how it, it, him starting can be totally ruled out. Anyway, current form. One, two, three, four, five. Leeds unbeaten in their last five. Drew with Huddersfield. Beat Stoke, beat Chef Wednesday, beat Millwall, then drew with Watford. And then for us, haven't won in five. Four draws. Drew West Brom, Preston, Birmingham, Leicester, and then lost to Stoke on Good Friday. The league table, if we look at that then. Ipswich top now. God, Leicester have fallen, haven't they? They have still got that game in hand. But God, they have sank. Um, we're six points adrift. It's not over, but it's difficult now. It's not over, but it's difficult now. And down the bottom, Rotherham. Were Rotherham mathematically done the other day? I think they were... Were they mathematically relegated the other day? I'm going to check. But I think they were. No, they weren't. They weren't mathematically relegated, but they must be close. What's the maths on that? So 39, so there's, it's 19 points. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Hmm. Seven games and it's 19 points. Fail to win and Rotherham are down, I think I think the maths on that is. Fail to win on Monday and Rotherham are down. Um I think that's the maths. So uh, speaking of which, Rotherham have to beat Millwall at the New York Stadium tomorrow. To have a chance, have a fighting chance of still remaining in this division next season. The rest of the games are Leicester versus Norwich at 12 30. Three o'clock kickoffs are the following Birmingham versus Preston, Swansea v QPR, West Brom v Watford, Sunderland versus Blackburn, Stoke versus Huddersfield, Rotherham v Millwall, Plymouth v Bristol City, Middlesbrough versus Chef Wednesday, Coventry versus Cardiff. 5.30 is Ipswich versus Southampton. And then 8 o'clock is Leeds versus Hull City. Um, I think if when if I think if we're to get playoffs and turn it around a lot, um, then the lap will play a big part in it. We click whenever he's in the side and we'll probably get the best of people like Anas. Happy Easter, Joe. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, mate. Um Norwich are going to win and we're going to lose. <laughs> it's going to be a sad day. Yeah. If that gap becomes nine points, then it's it, it's certainly done. It's certainly done. Memorable match. Hopefully we can have a repeat of this with Jaden Philogene scoring twice. Bowen did it just after Christmas in 2018 to give us a 2-0 win against Leeds. Team that day was Marshall and goal. Back four was Kane, Burke. Device and Kingsley. Midfield three, Stuart, Henriksen and Evandro. Bowen and Grzycki, the wingers with Will Keane up front. The bench, George Long, Eric Lehigh, Nua Dicko, John Turrell, 
Dan Batty, Robbie McKenzie and Chris Martin with Nigel Adkins, Howard Gaffer. And then the last time was, of course, Traore hitting the post from two yards out to win it. Nil-nil. Team, also up in goal on debut, back for Christy Jones, Greaves and Coyle at left back. The wide, the wide players were Twine and Philogene on the right, uh, not on the right, sorry, in midfield, Seri and Slater, up front, Delap and Connolly together. Bench, Ingram, Vinagra, McLaughlin, Tufan, Syed Manesh, Traore, who could have scored the winner, but didn't. Morton, Lakilo, and Andy Smith with Rosinha in the dugout. Former Tigers for Leeds, Dan James, Carl Darlow, and Liam Cooper on the bench. Uh, one said, get rid of these adverts. Is that going to be an advert for the Electoral Commission coming up? Yeah, I hate how this, uh, how this website's put the adverts on, uh, but I'm happy to promote the Electoral Commission pushing voter ID, so that's fine. Um, anyway, where's it gone? Last five against Leeds are as mixed bag as it can get. 2-0 win that we discussed in memorable match. 2-0 defeat uh, a year later. 4-0 defeat at home. Last home game before COVID, that. Um, technically beat them in the Carabao Cup, on, uh, but it was a draw in normal time when it won on penalties. Alfie Jones is winning penalty, by the way. Ha! Huh. Um, so we did technically win two of our last three visits to Elland Road and then drew 0-0 with them earlier this season. Shared shirts is a good one. Shared shirts is a very good one. I'm pleased with this. Matthew Pennington. Speaking of the COVID season... Um, it was on loan at Leeds from Everton in tw uh, from, for the 2017-18 season. Played 24 times for them, failed to score. Was on loan from Everton to us in the COVID season. Stayed on with us for the games that were postponed due to lockdown. 16 appearances, also failed to score for us. Now plays for Blackpool, I believe, in League One. Let's do predicted team then. All stopping goal. Coyle, Jones, McLaughlin, Giles, the back four. Morton, Seri, Carvalho, the midfield. Zaruri, Philogene and Abdush up top. So that team is the team that beat Southampton and drew with Leicester, minus Greaves, obviously, and... Regan Slater, who although had a brilliant game the other day, I think will get dropped. Bench, Panda, Doherty, not, no, not Panda, Doherty, Panda, Tufan, Doherty, Ohio, Traore, Slater, Jacob, Ashby and Connolly. He'll probably put Christie on the bench instead of Stan, but I think you've got to have a natural centre-half in there. Billy Sharp has been a Leeds United player. Yes, he has, but he's a current Hull City player and I cannot be asked to change a graphic. Um... Right, thank you. Right, no, I've skipped predicted score there. Score predictions, everyone. You know what? It might sound delusional. And it definitely, you know what? It definitely does. It definitely does sound delusional. But I can see us getting a smash and grab 1-0. I really, really can see us getting a smash and grab 1-0. I really, really can. Anyway, I'll see you lot in the away end tomorrow. Up a tier. It's going to be bouncing. Elland Road is falling down. Falling down. Falling down. Elland Road is falling down. It's a shit hole. Anyway, 4-0. Um, delusional. Um, don't be stupid. Nice. 2-1 Abdush winner. Come on. It's delusional, I know it is, but it's so typical of us. It's so typical of us.
anyway, thank you for watching, everyone. See you in the away end at Leeds tomorrow. Up the Tigers, safe travels and goodbye.